You are listening to Lighthearted, the official podcast of the United States Lighthouse Society. My name is Jeremy Dontremont. Welcome. This is a very special edition of Lighthearted. Today is February 27th, 2022, and I've just recorded an interview with a woman by the name of Tatiana, or Tanya as she goes by, Tanya Manzuk in Kiev, Ukraine. Obviously a place that is in uh, the middle of uh, the news today and in all our hearts. And uh, I had a very interesting conversation with her. The conversation touches on a number of things, uh, including lighthouses. I made contact with Tanya through Facebook, through a mutual friend, and I saw that she had a picture of herself at a lighthouse as her profile picture. That was part of what led me to contact her and arrange this interview today. So let me go ahead and play the interview with Tanya Manzuk in Kiev, Ukraine. I'm speaking today with Tatanya, or Tanya Manzuk, who is in one of the great capital cities of the world, uh, Kiev in Ukraine, uh, such a beautiful city as uh, many of us here in the United States, who some of us may not have been familiar with it that much, uh, until lately. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the best circumstances, the reasons we've been seeing it, but it's such a beautiful old city. First of all, let me let me thank you so much for being with me today, Titania. I, I so appreciate it. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me and for your patience with postponing this conversation. It's also important to know that uh, we are not alone in this situation and there are people who follow us and who want to learn um, how are we uh, i appreciate this you are so so far from alone i hope you've been able to see the the support the people of ukraine have from around the world i mean here i'm in uh, new hampshire in the northeastern u.s and all over the united states there have been demonstrations for peace, but also shows of solidarity in various ways with Ukraine and people raising money to support the people of Ukraine. And that's happening all over the world. I think the world is, uh, for the most part, united uh, supporting you. Uh, and I want to mention that we, we got in contact because a mutual friend on Facebook, uh, and I'm probably going to pronounce her name wrong, but uh, Yana Gultieva, mm-hmm. uh, say, say her name properly for me, if you could. Uh, we don't know each other that much personally, Yana right. Vitaeva. Yeah, okay. Um, she's and- from Belarus, I believe, but lives in France, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. I understand, yeah. And she's kind of a, a Lighthouse fan. We, I had uh, communicated with her a bit in the past. And she reposted a post that you made uh, about organizations that are helping the people of Ukraine. And I commented on that, and uh, you and I got in touch. And uh, I was so happy that you agreed to to talk uh, today and no problem with this being delayed. Uh, that's uh, that's certainly understandable. Let me let me ask you uh, obvious question first of all. How how are you doing? Huh. Um, this is a bit tricky question right now uh, because I can say uh, two um, totally opposite answers. Like uh, I am okay and I'm totally not okay. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, I'm okay uh, because uh, right now I'm alive. I'm with my boyfriend. Uh, We support each other and um, I have um, water, electricity, internet, as you see, obviously. Uh, So this is like, I'm okay. But of course, uh, the situation uh, and the circumstances circumstances I'm in, it's not okay at all. And um, we, uh, we receive very anxious news. Um, and um, today is like the middle of our curfew. We have it from uh, five o'clock uh, in the evening yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will be able to go out only tomorrow at eight in the morning, probably. <laughs> The, yeah. I don't know, and this um, uh, this is um, a bit paralyzing uh, situation because you cannot do anything and you just scroll the news and um, uh, it uh, makes your mentality not very 
mm, housey, let's say. Right. I completely understand. So, yeah, I was going to ask you, obviously, again, you have electricity. Do you have heat? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, actually, it's like already beginning of the spring and it's not that much cold outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but a little heating we have also, yeah. Yeah, and you have enough food? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, before the curfew start, our uh, supermarkets were working and uh, we were able to take some supplies like water, food, mm -hmm. <laughs> cigarettes, this kind of things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and are you able to watch television? Is that? Uh, we don't have television at mm -hmm. our home, uh, but uh, we follow uh, different like Telegram channels, uh, also uh, official uh, public of um, our government uh, yeah. in Facebook. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, so where in Kiev do you live? Are you near the center? Are you near the government buildings? Um, not, not directly there, but yeah, it's one of the central um, neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, I think, to me that you're on like a hill kind of overlooking the city. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, probably um, some of the listeners know that Kiev landscape is... Um, it is based on hills actually so it's one of cave hills um, and uh, yeah we're on this hill uh it makes me think of like maybe san francisco a very hilly american <laughs> city actually like i that. know that uh that cities like to say this kind of uh, romantic uh images romantic metaphors about themselves like city of seven hills city of <laughs> that amount of hills my mm -hmm. boyfriend is from istanbul and uh, and uh, also they like to call istanbul city of several hills <laughs> istanbul <laughs> so, uh-huh yeah. yeah that's another beautiful old city of course you know uh i've been looking at uh obviously we've all been seeing on on television and the internet pictures and video of ukraine lately but I, I like to sometimes when I want to do a walk and the weather isn't good, I get on YouTube and I do what they call virtual walks where you, it's like you can visit different cities, have them on. I stand close to the television and like I'm walking in the city and I was doing Odessa uh, a few days ago. It was oh. so, so beautiful. There was like a walk through Odessa at night with people enjoying cafes and restaurants and things. Mm. And, just, but the, the cities there look, look so beautiful. And the, you have buildings in Kiev that are like a thousand years old, right? Yeah, we have uh, very old uh, churches, um, mm -hmm. which were built um, after Kiev Rus, our pre, -pre state. <laughs> after it became Christian, they started to build these churches and some of them still, uh, still we have, they are saved, even though uh, Second World War and this kind of things. So yeah, I know uh, it's a there's so many terrible aspects about what's happening right now. I, uh, you know, those buildings, uh, any damage to those buildings is certainly certainly tragic. It's obviously quiet there now. It's uh, it's ten in the morning where I am here in in the U.S. Uh, on the East Coast, but it's uh. What, what time is it there? It's seven hours later, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's so it's five p.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems, see, at least I can't hear anything in the background. Is it, is it quiet there at this this moment? At this particular moment, yes. Um, that was um, even uh, this night was uh, plus minus silent, but there were too many news about. Uh, possible uh, missile shooting and even um, plane shooting. So um, even though it was quiet, we couldn't uh, sleep yeah. because of this news. And, I can't, uh, yeah, I can imagine. In the morning, there were uh, gunshot sounds uh, a bit. And uh, also, um, I'm not sure uh, because uh, I don't have this experience that much, but right now I think that this sounds also which I hear is uh, air defense sound. I mean, our air defense. Um, so also we heard today. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, have uh, shelters around around the city, I think, in 
to various um, buildings, right? Basements of the buildings, underground parkings. Is uh, it your your own building? That is your no. is that your shelter? No. No, we don't have shelter, and we don't have a shelter around us. So we hide in bathroom and in the corridor. Have has that happened? Have you had air air raid sirens uh, like this past past night? Did you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. at night uh, several times, and one time in the morning today. Mm -hmm. But it passed fairly quickly. Usually, it's unclear. As it's like siren, it sounds one minute. Probably we hear the sound one two minutes, mm -hmm. and then uh, sometimes, uh, luckily, it's silent all the time. Or sometimes, like, or sometimes we start to hear some explosion sounds. It's every time different. I trust uh, our municipality and our army. So I believe that this is their kind warning. And uh, after um, they do everything uh, possible to not to um, allow uh, any threat to to attack us. Right. Um, let me ask you, you, you work for an organization called House of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Can you explain what that is? Yes, of course. Um, this is a European Union fund program, which was uh, established uh, for um, cultural and creative exchange between uh, professionals from Ukraine and European Union countries. And the main uh, focus is culture and creative industries. Uh, but also it's um, education, social entrepreneurship, um, work with youth, um, healthcare, um, and media. It's like in those fields, uh, we believe that democratic reforms in Ukraine are the most needed, and, th and that's why this program was founded. And uh, I was in the position of front desk coordinator uh, more than one year. And so I, I was informing people about different programs, which we have different opportunities, which they can apply. And uh, <laughs> since the beginning of this year, I was promoted. And what is your uh, position? Right now I'm alumni officer, so it's um, I uh, I built our alumni community. It means like uh, people who um, received grants from us or who graduated different uh, professional growth uh, programs. They are our alumni from now on, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we want to uh, keep in touch uh, with this community. So that was that is my responsibility. That's wonderful. It sounds like the organization does so much good, good work. And you must uh, speak English a lot in your capacity in that in that position. And I, I just want to say your your English is 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 perfect. Oh, I thank you. This is really a compliment from your side, and you are too kind to me. I'm sure. I uh, yeah, I use uh, English at work all the time. And also since my school time, I was uh, studying um, in different courses. Then I was volunteer of another cultural organization. And I uh, used to communicate with uh, people from different countries. So I learned uh, in practice. But <laughs> before today's meeting, I was also searching this um, uh, military language because, for example, I didn't know um, some names like missile and this well that's kind of sad that you have to research those those terms uh you know uh and it says something about the life you were living before this that you didn't have exposure to those those terms and i'm sorry sorry you do now this is uh in theory a podcast about lighthouses <laughs> so uh you know again the title of the podcast is light-hearted and that refers to people who have lighthouses in their hearts. Uh, sometimes I do segments. Mostly we actually talk about actual lighthouses, uh, about their history, about their preservation, things that people are doing, uh, activities at lighthouses, things like that. But uh, sometimes I do a segment called Be a Lighthouse that's about people who are doing good in the communities in various ways and organizations. Certainly 
you and your organization, House of Europe, would uh, fall into that category, I would say, of being a, a lighthouse for people in the community. But let's just talk a little bit about lighthouses themselves. I, I know it seems almost uh, frivolous to talk about lighthouses at this point uh, in these circumstances, but I'm just wondering, you know, if you have any thoughts about them. I um, I noticed on your Facebook page that you have a picture of a lighthouse. Uh, mm-hmm. In the picture, you're looking at a, a lighthouse on your uh, profile picture. Do you know, uh, do you remember what lighthouse that is in that picture? Yeah, yeah, of course I remember. Uh, um, probably, you know, uh, city of Berdyansk in Ukraine. Um, mm. There is, this city is not very big. Uh, it's on uh, Azov Sea. Okay. Uh, and... Um, uh, this photo was made in summer uh, 2016 by my friend Alina. Uh, together with her, we had a small cultural project uh, about the city of Berdyansk. Um, we um, were searching together with local um, university uh, professors. We were searching history of this city because it's very interesting. Uh, it's a uh, multicultural. It was founded uh, obviously as a port, city port. Mm-hmm. Um, there was uh, a lot of trading. Um, there were uh, Bulgarians, Greeks, uh, Germans, uh, Polish people uh, living, coming to there and starting to live there. And uh, still some. Uh, um, uh, some buildings left uh, since that time. It's like um, uh, it's like let's say va- one hundred fifty, no, even two hundred years ago. Uh, for example, there is a Polish church Kostol and also um, Karaim Kanasa, very old and beautiful buildings. Um, and also uh, Berdyansk, uh, it accepts a lot of um, internally displaced people from uh, occupied uh, Donetsk and Luhansk regions in two thousand fourteen. This edges of uh, reality and, and, and past, it was very, very sharp and very interesting to research. So we went there, we stayed there and we did our research. And mm-hmm. this uh, lighthouse, um, there are two lighthouses in this uh, city. There is, um, okay, I will find this word, I forget, uh-huh, sea spit. Uh, spit like this long line of um, of the ground which goes uh, far to the sea spit yeah, yeah. We, in, s-p-i-t in english yeah yes, um yes, we could yes. right uh, a long uh, piece of land mm-hmm. small that extends into the the water yeah yeah mm-hmm. and uh, there is um, 18 kilometer spit uh, in berdansk and this lighthouse which i have photo with uh, it's just on the edge of this uh, spit and um, it was built uh, also um, I guess uh, in 1838, so it's like one mm-hmm. of the oldest Ukrainian mm-hmm. lighthouses for ships who get enter Berdansk port. Mm, and uh, Azov Sea, uh, I don't know if you know this fact, but it's the shallowest, the less deep sea in the world. So uh, it's quite challenging to, um, to, to go by ship there. Mm-hmm. And lighthouses were crucially needed. And um, I will, uh, after our conversation, I will send you one article. We have a project, um, Ukraine, it's um, a project about different cities and uh, places and people in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. And they did very nice um, article with video about the keeper of this lighthouse who is working there more than 50 years. Uh, mm-hmm. he, oh. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's still working there. Uh, he started yeah. to work when he was a young boy uh, with his father, and then he uh, continued to to work there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very interesting story. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is about Berdansk lighthouse. Mm, I saw um, today in the news that uh, there are tanks in Berdansk today. Uh, so it's, I don't know, 
history right now turns. I know. Well, we all hope that that is over very soon. Um, I just saw the news uh, this morning that there are uh, negotiations supposedly about to happen, possibly, possibly at least, hopefully, on the border with Belarus. And uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts uh, hearing that news. Um, um, to be honest, uh, I um, I don't feel uh, myself like um, being able to comment. I because I'm not a specialist sure. uh, in this kind of things. I just can say what I feel. Uh, I really uh, feel anxious and worry for um, for our delegation and uh, the Russian border doesn't seem like the safest place uh, right. for this kind of things. I want to believe everything will go well. Me too, all of us. We're all uh, holding our breaths and uh, hoping and, and praying for the best. Back to, to lighthouses, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts. Uh, obviously, uh, you mentioned how important they are for navigation in such a, a shallow sea and, and the, on the Black Sea and, and uh, various places around there. But aside from navigational importance, do you have any feelings about kind of the relevance of lighthouses in our world? It's a really beautiful metaphor, of course. It's uh, probably one of the most beautiful, like, uh, sign light in the darkness, which uh, help you to follow the correct way and to avoid danger. Uh, so um, it's a very, very transparent, but very beautiful metaphor. And... Um, Aesthetically, also, these lighthouses are amazing. Uh, so, um, I, for example, about Berdyansk uh, lighthouse, I'm thinking uh, it could be beautiful cultural spot, like a museum and place for for this kind of experiences. Yeah, beautifully said. You know, uh, I'm thinking that. I'd like to discuss the possibility of maybe you can help host a, a Zoom event for the U.S. Lighthouse Society about the lighthouses of Ukraine at some point. Let's uh, let's yeah. let's keep that thought thought in mind. Okay. We can... okay. So besides the the lighthouse you were just talking about, that's on your, your Facebook page, have you visited other lighthouses as well? Uh, no, unfortunately, no. I know that we have lighthouses in Odessa, mm -hmm. uh, and I guess probably in other uh, port cities, cities which are on the sea coast. Uh, but I didn't visit them. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, I know, and my friend visited some uh, beautiful lighthouses in Spain. Um, it also could be some. Uh, a map of travel, a map of your destination points. Uh, if you are thinking about some journey, uh, I think it's a very nice idea. Yeah, well, there's, there's so many great lighthouses all over Europe and Russia and, all, and Asia. I mean, any country that has a coastline, but you have got so many beautiful, uh, really old lighthouses uh, in Europe. And uh, if uh, things go according to plan, I'll be going to England and Ireland in uh, July, for the month mm. of July. So I'll be seeing a lot of lighthouses and castles and other things there. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And I hope I can come to Ukraine sometime. I would love that too. Uh, by the way, have you ever mm -hmm. been? No, nope. You I've never been, been, but it's on my it's on my bucket list. Do you know that? <laughs> do you know that term? <laughs> Meaning something bucket list. Uh -huh. something you want to do be you know while you're still able to to mm. experience things so mm. i hope so the post i saw that you made on facebook that uh prompted me to make contact with you was uh you in that post you listed some uh organizations different ways that people can help can donate uh money to help the people of ukraine and uh, I'm wondering if, if right now, I don't know if we can go through them all right now, but I will post them when I, I post this on our news blog, I'll post the list. But are there, are there maybe a, one or two uh, especially that you'd like to mention that you think are really, really good? Uh, first of all, uh, this is uh, our charity fund, uh, Come Back Alive. Uh, they help uh, to uh, military forces and to veterans. 
Um, and uh, this is uh, really um, year proven, well trusted foundation. And um, there is one sad fact about uh, them uh, that um, they were in the top 10 of world Patreon. Um, but uh, one night uh, after uh, all this started, after the war started, their page was uh, deleted from Patreon without warning. Uh, with uh, two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar mm. on this account, um, they have, mm. um, of course, not only patient Patreon. They have also bank account where people can support. Uh, but this is also about this um, rules uh, which exist in the world and different powers with which fight on different uh, front lines. I would say. Um, come, so, come back alive, you said, is the name of the organization. Uh, yes, come back alive in Ukraine and Povernes Um And the uh, other, uh, which I can mention, is an official uh, account from our national bank uh, for uh, arm, armed forces needs. Uh, this one is also totally official and uh, mm, like official source. Mm -hmm. There are also many volunteer groups, uh, but it's like more local uh, because sometimes they don't have opportunity to accept money from abroad or it's for local coordination. So uh, probably what I mentioned is uh, the most real opportunities to, to support. Uh, I've seen uh, on the internet about people raising money in all kinds of ways for Ukraine. Uh, there was something about a, a young person in America. I, I don't remember all the details, but they I think they created some sort of stickers or something to, to support Ukraine. I don't know if you've heard about this, but they he's this person said uh, that they uh, they thought they would maybe make five hundred dollars and send a check and then but they're so swamped with orders the last I, I looked it said that it had raised one hundred seventy five thousand dollars so that's, that's amazing it's people, very yeah. very great to hear this um, I want to share also my concerns uh, what I see it's also uh, sometimes hard uh, here on the spot to make delivery of particular things because uh, because um, war actions are in different regions and uh, sometimes the roads are closed and uh, it's impossible also to move right logistic is complicated yeah uh, oh, I'm, but it's, I'm sure. it's it's really great that people try to do something and uh, to support well, I know, uh, I think I can speak for, for people everywhere, um, you know, that we, we want to help with, we, we um, you know, it's almost a feeling of helplessness when you see what's going on and we, we wish we could do more, but we, we, uh, we have so much admiration and respect for the people of Ukraine. And, you know, I always, I've, for a long time, I thought it looked like a, a beautiful country with beautiful people. And, uh, you know, that's certainly been confirmed. By everything we're seeing before we we sign off today before we end this conversation and i hope we'll talk again by the way and you can up, update us on what's happening but um do you have any other message uh, at this point that you just uh, like to like to add to anybody listening um yes thank you uh i want to say thanks to you and to your listeners who worry about us um you said just beautiful words that you admire our people i can say i also admire my people i admire um, everyone uh, who who do who is doing his or her job on his or her place um, it's um very sensitive moment uh, moments we are going through um, and uh, also I want to say that I feel like uh, it's not only about us it's not only about Ukraine um, I feel like it's about about Europe about the world um, because uh, right now we feel ourselves like a frontier uh, like a fr frontier of of the world and um, that's uh, that's great that we have support and uh, 
that's amazing to see these demonstrations, this uh, posts, and I just want to ask people to continue and to consider it in a global context and to consider that um, our planet is really small and vulnerable. I couldn't agree with you more, and that's, that's beautifully said. Uh, Tanya Manzuk, I, I, I hate to, to break it off. It's wonderful talking with you. It really is. It's really a pleasure. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And again, uh, let's stay in touch and uh, hopefully talk again. And uh, we wish you all, all the best. We wish you peace. And thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you. Many greetings from Kiev, Ukraine. Again, thank you so much to Tanya Manzuk for today's interview. I invite our listeners to visit our news blog at news.uslhs.org. The post for this podcast episode uh, contains a list of organizations that you can donate to, and I urge everybody to do uh, whatever you can to to uh, help to reach out and help the people of Ukraine, whether it's a monetary donation, whether it's taking part in a peace demonstration whatever it may be. And of course, to all our regular listeners, to all our new listeners, thank you so much for listening and keep a good light.